Hello guys, my name is JB from Lime Valley Engine Works and uh, I'm going to start doing podcasts called Power from the Past Podcast. So this is a little opener to that. Um, like I said, my name is JB, everybody calls me JB uh, from Lime Valley Engine Works. Um, and here at Lime Valley Engine Works, um, our big goal is to inspire, teach, and uh, just, you know, create new friendships with fellow collectors, the next generation. Um, I feel that, you know, it's it's very important to get the next generation interested in the hobby. <coughs> because without the next generation, everything that we have isn't really worth anything. Um, so I always try to, try to get new people interested, uh, whether that be teaching them stuff or just finding them what they're looking for. Um, I am also big into history. I, I love seeing where things came from, how things progressed and how things changed, where companies went, um, just, just things like that. History is a big part of what got us to where we are now. Um, so these podcasts are going to be all about um, history, whether that be with garden tractors, hit and miss engines, tractors, cars, tools. Um, different businesses, um, the way things progressed, like uh, blacksmiths going to mechanics, going to you know welding shops, stuff like that. Um, I really like local history too. I collect a lot of things that are local to Lancaster County, local to Pennsylvania. Um, so I'll teach you guys a little bit about them. Um, I'm also going to sit down with fellow collectors that are die hard into certain things. Uh, certain tractor brands, certain car brands, things like that, and um, talk to them and have them share some of their knowledge with us. It's very hard in this hobby to know everything about everything, and when you think you know everything, you are far, far wrong. Um, I go to a lot of auctions, a lot of shows, and there's always things that you've never seen before, and that's what I like, that's what I collect is things that I've never seen before, whether that be tools, signs, advertising, um, parts. I have just a ton of stuff. Upstairs here is a little museum that kind of exploded and it's into another shed now too. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, and your hobby always changes, your interests always change. So that's what I want to share with people is, you know, learning the basics and then getting more in depth with it. Um, with, with garden tractors, uh, there's a couple people I'm going to sit down with and talk to them about the garden tractors that they are, that they primarily collect and are very, very knowledgeable about. Um, like Rick Wagner. Rick Wagner collects Wagner garden tractors. He knows, he is the most knowledgeable person on Wagner garden tractors that there is. Uh, he spent a lot of time doing a lot of research and that is like his, the, the bulk of his collection is Wagner tractors. Um, so I'd like to sit down, talk to him, pick his brain about some things, have him teach us some things. You know, it's not just about me learning things, it's about teaching you guys things too. Um, I'm going to try to get a different, very good variety of different people to sit down and talk to. See where they came from, what got them into the, hit, into the hobby. Um, just some fun stories and stuff like that. Um, and then we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about little tricks um, that I do in the shop here working on uh, small engines and big engines and, and tractors and stuff that'll just make your life a little bit easier. Uh, places that you can get parts from. Um, <clears throat> you know people you can talk to if you have questions. That's what this is really about because I know when you first get into the hobby it's very hard to build connections. It's very hard to you know figure out all these things when I first started out, the, the older generation didn't want to talk to, to people my age because we were just kind of ignorant and thought we knew everything. So it takes a long time for you to be able to build up friendships and relationships with those type of people. Um, so if I can share knowledge with you guys to help you on the right track, that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, we're going to try to make this fun, informative, um, and just, just, just about anything. Like I said, garden tractors, tractors, um, hit and miss engines, cars, old car, um, old trucks, road tractors, 
Um, there's a couple of different people that I want to sit down with and just talk, um, talk to and, you know, sh have them show you where they came from and what they do now to see that, you know, if, if you put the work in, be, you can get anywhere you want to be, you know. Um, so, yeah, like I said, that's the plan. Uh, the first one that we're going to do, um, I'm going to sit down with my good friend, Zach Applebach. He goes to a lot of shows with me. Uh, we're going to sit down and we're just going to talk. We're going to talk about what he's interested in. Uh, he's into old cars. He's into Fairbanks engines, um, Cub Cadets. He's knowledgeable on that kind of stuff where I'm not. Um, and just see where he came from and, and you know, keep building, building up. Uh, see how far he's come and what projects he's got going on. And then uh, it's most likely going to be me and him sitting down talking to different people and just... You know, we'll be learning with you guys, which is really cool. Um, there's some peop some things I want to talk about that normally aren't talked about, um, like um, corn shellers and plate mills and stuff like that. I have a friend that's very knowledgeable in that kind of stuff. Um, I want to sit down with some people talk about steam. I'm not that knowledgeable about steam. I have this steam engine behind me. I have another one. Um, another traction engine and then I got a couple upright engines and stuff like that I'm just learning into it um, building my knowledge on my own reading books stuff like that which I can um, when it comes to garden tractors and tractors and steam engines I can show you some really informative books that will help you a lot when it comes to figuring out history figuring out what it is uh, learning what to do how to work on it things like that <clears throat> So like I said, I want it to be an informative podcast where we're going to sit down with people and just have fun but learn at the same time. You know, I'm sure throughout my podcasts you'll see my furry friends. Um, there's one right here. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be joining in as well, so I do apologize for that in advance. But the engine behind me, I just bought this about a month ago. Um, it's got a domestic geyser two horse. Um, the actual steam engine is a domestic geyser two horse um, built boiler and everything. It's got a lot of local history to it. Um, the engine actually came from Kunzler Meats. Um, it was hooked to the side of an upright upright boiler uh, from geyser, um, and then the rest was made by a blacksmith down uh, by Robert Fulton. So when I seen it, I knew kind of where it came from. It spent some time in uh, Alice Chalmers' dealer um, outside of Quarryville, Grimelli's. Um, and when I seen it pop up for sale, I knew I kind of needed to have it. It was the second chance I had to buy it, so I figured it needed to come home. Um, I'm still working on it, cleaning it up. There's a couple things I need to do to it, um, but hopefully I'll have it fired up and ready to go. Uh, we are going to do a podcast at the Lebanon Valley Indoor Expo. Uh, with Josh Devin uh, talk to him about the show and what motivates him behind it why he started in the hobby what he does in the hobby um, he helps a lot of people he connects a lot of people he's a really really cool guy um, and then there's a couple other people that I know will be at the show that I'd like to sit down with and just you know talk to him a little bit and and just uh, you know have a little bit of a of a bullcrap session and talk about the show it's a really nice show I like it a lot it's one of my favorites um, and that's another thing I'm going to try to do is do podcasts at shows um, to try to help them build build their show up a little bit you know get the word out of what they're doing um, because these shows some of these shows are hurting you know they don't have the support like they used to and uh, I want to help them you know keep that going because to me, shows are very, very important. Uh, it's where you connect with a lot of people. You get to hang out with a lot of people. There's shows I go to. Um, I'll take some stuff. I'll sit in the lawn chair. I'll walk around. I just sit there and talk to people. Because it's like the only time that I see those people. Um, so like I said, if you can support your local shows, um, that means a lot to them. You know, there's a lot of cool stuff out there that you don't normally see that people are bringing to shows and it's, it's, it's really, really neat that they do that. And if you think about the time and the effort that it takes to take all that stuff to shows, I mean, I went to 53 tractor and engine shows last year. Um, that wasn't exactly the easiest task. You know, it was one, two, three every weekend, 
You know, go to one Thursday, go to one Friday, go to one Saturday, come home and do a live stream Sunday. So it, it gets to be a lot, um, but it, it's a lot of fun. I, I do it because you get to share your knowledge and you get to share the history behind the things. You get to show people things that they've never seen before. And to me, that's the coolest part. If I can go, out of all those shows, if I inspired two people last year to get into the hobby, that's awesome. That to me, that paid, that paid its way, you know, and I want to be able to give back and and be able to share my knowledge and connect you guys with people that know what they're talking about and have good knowledge in it, you know. Um, I want to do another podcast about just safety stuff, um, things you always need to do when you're working on different things, things not to do. Uh, when you're running your engine, when you start your tractor, stuff like that, you know, no, everybody on online here is talking about, you know, how to start a 1020, but they never tell you to take it out of gear. Make sure it's out of gear. Whenever you start any tractor, any garden tractor, make sure it's out of gear. That is a very, very, very important thing, because if you're standing in front of an old tractor like that, cranking it, it's going to run you over, and it's going to run right through your garage. So that's a very important thing to remember. Uh, when you're running hit and miss engines, you know, there's a lot of things moving around and a lot of lot of safety things there that you can lose a finger, you can lose an arm very, very quickly. You know, and it shows people don't understand that. So I'd like to like to build into that a little bit, teach you guys, um, just, just explain to you, uh, people that aren't familiar with it, you know, the damage that can be done. You know, I... I think this will be a lot of fun. I'm hoping to do one, one or two a month, um, just connecting and sitting down with people, and just sharing our knowledge with you. Like I said, knowledge is a big, big part of this hobby, and you know these the things that we're talking about may not be exactly what you're into, but you know if if you're in this hobby, you understand the history, you appreciate things, and there's things that I don't collect in my in my collection. <clears throat> um, I mean, I have a hundred and I think 180 garden tractors, pretty much all pre 1958, um, between riders and walk behinds. And I have no Cub Cadets, I have no John Deere's, and I have no wheel horses. I do not collect them. I appreciate them, and I have no Sears. I do not collect them, but I appreciate them. I you know, they all have good qualities about them. They're just not something I'm into. But I will sit there and I will talk to you about them and I will try to help you as much as I can with them. You know, but it's not something that I keep in my collection. Um, so like I said, everybody is into different things and if you can appreciate what everybody is into, you know, that makes a big, big difference and keeps... You know, people interested and doesn't deter people from the hobby. That's another big problem with the hobby right now is that, you know, some of these guys, they collect wheel horses or they collect Cub Cadets or they collect John Deere's or they collect Sears and everything else is junk. But it's not. You know what I mean? Because in reality, back in the day, whoever first started making a garden tractor, everybody's just copying off everybody else and changing stuff. You know what I mean? Every tractor, even farm tractors, have good qualities about them and bad qualities about them. But it's all in personal preference. You know what I mean? And I, I understand what I like about them, and I understand why other people like them. They're just not something that I collect and I'm into. You know, I appreciate them. Um, I'll talk to you about them. I'll, have, I'll, I'll answer some questions about them. I know a little bit about them about the more common tractors, but I don't know everything about them. Um, so yeah, I want to sit down and, and, you know, with different people that are into different stuff, people that are into John Deere's, and talk to them, and have them share your their knowledge with you. People that are into Cub Cadets, people that are into wheel horses, you know, tell you differences between the models and things to look for and hard parts to find and where you can find stuff. You know, that's an important part of this hobby is being able to track down parts and being able to not get discouraged is the big thing. You know, I've... I believe that it takes one good experience for you to get in the hobby and one bad experience for you to leave forever. 
I'm trying to be that good experience and keep those good experiences going. Because, like I said, without the next generation and without new people getting into this hobby, the hobby's going to just start falling apart and this stuff is just going to go to the wayside and all we did was just save it from the scrapyard for 20 years. And that's, that's not what I want to see happen. Because once history is gone, it's gone. If you can't keep the history with an item, it's gone. You know, that's what makes things important to me, you know. I get excited about the history behind something. Like, to some of you guys, this engine back here isn't really worth anything. But to me, the local connection that it has, the fact that I know exactly where it came from, who made it, you know, every little thing about it, and you start looking at it and seeing all the little details to it, to me, this is worth more and more than anything, any other engine like this that I could go buy. You know, just like the other one that I have, it was made in Art Young shop. Uh, Art Young started rough and tumble in Kinzer. Once I found out all the connections on that, where it came from, how it was built, who built it, all the hands that were into it, um, some other history about it. It actually has a stepbrother engine, and it has six. That is the last of six engines that the gentleman built like to me that is awesome you know that that made that engine worth so much more to me because the history behind it but if you don't save that history behind it then the next person it ain't worth nothing you know that's that's what I like is the history behind things I have a couple tractors with really cool stories behind them um, and that's that's just to me that's what that's what excites me you know, I'm all over the place when it comes to collecting. I collect lanterns and steam engines and toys and oil cans and signs and engines and garden tractors and there's all kinds of stuff upstairs. I started collecting blacksmith tools, like handmade blacksmith tools, like screwdrivers, wrenches, um, knives, stuff like that, like old stuff. Um, it just amazes me that you didn't have money to buy a screwdriver, but you took three days to make one. You know, that, that kind of stuff, I can appreciate that. Um, that they didn't have no money, they needed this, so they made it. You know, that's, that's the cool part about as we progress as a society, too, to see how things have changed and see how things have developed into, you know, what we have now, which some of the stuff now is you go to Lowe's and you buy a brand new mower, for a thousand dollars and it's a piece of crap and it's never going to last you know 50 60 70 years it's not you get 10 years out of it you throw it in the dumpster you know so these these older tractors we gotta we gotta save you know what i mean so like i said that's what this podcast is going to be about trying to inform you guys trying to have fun with you guys teach you guys um, and just learn from other people. You know, this hobby is constantly about learning. You learn something new every day. And if you don't learn something new every day and you think that you know everything, you're not in this hobby for the correct reason. You know, you're just, you're just not. So, you know, with this hobby, it's, it's, it's a big thing. You got to be humble. You got to listen to people. And you got to, you know, take what they say and go with it. You know, you may not think that they're right, but these old, these older guys, they've been there, they've done that, they've worked on that a hundred times. You know, how they tell you to do it in the moment may not be right, but when you go home and you're fighting with it and fighting with it and fighting with it, remember what they said and just try it, and it might work. You, you might be surprised. So like I said, guys, I hope you can join me for the podcasts. Um, we're going to try to do one or two every month, um, just try to inform you guys and have some fun with it so like i said my name's jb from lime valley engine works um you can like and follow lime valley engine works on facebook um we do a lot of stuff um we we sell all kinds of stuff i'm always posting pictures of stuff that i'm adding to my collection projects i'm working on um and if you guys have any questions about things you can message me through there and uh, i'll try to answer them for you so thank you guys very much and uh, I hope you keep an eye out for my podcasts. Like I said, uh, it's going to be me and the first one I'm going to sit down with uh, me and Zach Applebach and uh, just talk. Go into a little bit, a little bit of everything. So thank you guys very much for your support. 
and I look forward to uh, doing some more of these. So thank you guys. Have a great rest of your day.